Happy Sabbath, people, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, and all others, of course. But I have been given a message last night, this morning, and following through with it. I don't know how to explain it except for with a, a picture because I like displaying things in pictures. So I'm going to give this one of chopping the tree down. And it's funny because George Washington used this. I could never tell a lie. I chopped the cherry tree down. If you think about it, the cherry represents the virginity of a woman. The tree represents the cross that Jesus fell upon for us. So the vision of the chopping of the tree is an ax hitting the tree and there's chunks being taken out. These chunks I represent as the societies and the teachings of society. The beast of the east is coming and that's the teachings from the east. East Indians, the medicines, the Asians, uh, their technology and their joining forces. This tree is about the fall. That's when the Christians are going to be put on trial. And going through this trial to me it represents the cutting of the tree to make the cross. This cross represents what Jesus died for us. It also represents what we're supposed to pick up after resurrection. Okay? If this is confusing, ask the questions because I've got so much information I got to get out here back on track the cross has been the idol that the, the Roman Catholic Church has represented their teachings which Roman Christianity is an oxymoron but they parallel to more of the Jewish and the Islam which you can pretty well group them together with the cabal guess who's teaching us everything <laughs> and guess who the government is okay so you understand not all is bad there is good but it doesn't matter because everything is under the control of Jesus Amen. so I'd like to continue on with a prayer now Jesus your words are alive and they're shaking the world today just the action of the people themselves you know there's something wrong as you said can two sit together at the same table and disagree we're seeing this upon the world right now your message that you brought to us is the importance of what this world is about and changing that message is what puts you on the cross that was us. We changed your message. Please forgive me. And this video is about just that. So I ask you, in Jesus' name, for the use of the Holy Spirit, to speak from my tongue and deliver this message. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I get overwhelmed sometimes. Please excuse me. Okay. What I'm going to do is go through some verses. Actually, I'm going to go through one verse. And then I'm going to let some 
audio play. And this is out of Revelations 22, starting at 16. I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify unto you these things and to the churches. So this is not Jesus coming to the earth. This is the angels that the Father allowed Jesus to use, which I believe is explained in Genesis 1-2 with the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God are the angels that did not fall. But that's what scriptures tell me. I am the root and the offspring of David. That's what he did. Jesus came through David. And the bright and morning star. And this is very important because all the rest of the angels are morning stars. The ones that fell and the ones that did not fall. Because Jesus is the bright and morning star. Number one. Okay. And the spirit of the bride say, Come, let him that heareth hear what? Hear the word. And heareth say, Come. Let him that is arrests come. And whoever will let him take the water of life freely. The water of life is the word that was brought with a blood sacrifice. It is free. And Satan has brought this world to a, a pay to play. For I testify unto you every man that heareth the words of this prophecy, of this book, and this book is called the Holy Bible. The reprinted Bibles are not Holy Bibles because they have been changed. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the, the words of this book, of these prophecies God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book so why aren't our churches our so called leaders putting emphasis on the word of God all through scriptures it tells you about uh, taking the yeast of the Pharisees, um, the, the ten virgins, five of them, did not make it. Why? Because they were trying to buy the word of God. And the other ones did it through a lifestyle. So they were accepted. Now, that's with this thousand years, the rapture, before the thousand years, the rapture is about. It's going to pick up these five virgins that lived the life of Jesus. It says it in scriptures. They are the ones that are not going to be tested. And that's what this rapture is about. They will know the word of God. Throughout the rapture, you will have to die for the word of God. Why? because you never lived it, but you can speak it. And then you will start to live it because everything is going to be <laughs> like trying to live when we were kicked out of the garden. Because it'll be a pay to play and if you don't have the mark of the beast, you're not eating what they made. You're eating Let's just, you're eating what is grown in the garden. When we understand 
why the churches have dominated, why they will not let you interrupt in their Bible studies, because you'll put us behind the time. Well, excuse me, time rots. There's no time in heaven. But the churches are using it to think that, or let you think that, do not disturb us because your time is nothing compared to what we have to teach you, which is wrong in the first place. It's dictationship. It's communism. It is the mark of the beast, changing the word that was brought with a sacrifice. Um, I've got a couple of verses here I'd like for uh, you to listen to. Okay, please excuse the unprofessional way, but I prefer to push, put my time into scriptures. And this is Mark Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he Word. answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, if the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. whole day and I'm thinking Sorry. and looking at this now. so what we got there was a total deliverance of how the effect of the word works with salvation so the mark of the beast it would be changing that 
because as it comes from our heart, we have to think of it. And what we think of what we put in comes out of our heart, our mouth. I ask people to be start sharing these uh, videos, especially Sermon on the Web, because review them. You'll understand what I'm talking about. This is no game. But the elites are playing it like a video game on the internet. And they're using us and our information and cesspooling it into AI. And that's the beast that we cannot stop. Father, I thank you for this delivery today. Though there was some more things I wish I would have got out, but wishing is not the way we need to pray. So I'll leave this video, review it, and I'll make a part two. Using your words. your sacrifice of your only begotten son because without these words there would be no salvation for us so i thank you in jesus name amen happy sabbath